Okay, guys, so we would like to evaluate this integral, the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of 7 minus 1 all over the natural log of x with respect to x. And this is a hard integral by n means. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to do this one by integration by parts. Please don't make me. We'd have to do it at least seven times, and I don't want to do it. It would be messy, it would be awful. I'd like to use the famous trick there because this is just the most overpowered technique for integration I've ever seen in my entire life, and so let's go on and do it. So, what the famous trick actually means is what it actually tells you is to try and parameterize integral and make it a function of that parameter. Mm, in such a clever way that when you differentiate that integral with respect to the parameter, the integrand is going to simplify. So, well, what is the main simplification I would really, really hope for in terms of my integral I've got right there? Well, I'd love, I just love to get rid of this actual log in the denominator. I hate it, I don't want what happens. I hate it, I don't want it, I want to get rid of it as fast as possible. And so, well, if I were to, for example, introduce a parameter here instead of this 7 and then take the derivative with respect to that parameter a, well, a lot of fun stuff would happen. So let me go on and do it. I'd like to make myself a function f of a being equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of my a minus a 1 all over natural log of x with respect to x. And now I'd like to differentiate with respect to a. So I want to take the partial derivative of this thing with respect to a. And so what I'd get by doing that thing would be that f prime of a will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of a times the natural log of x, the derivative of this negative one is just going to be a mm, zero, and then the natural log of x in the denominator is not going to disappear because it's just a constant I'm multiplying x to the power of a by. And well, I've got what I wanted, my lns are going to cancel each other out, that's lovely. But, well, why is, it, why is it even helpful? I mean, I've got a derivative of some kind of a function in terms of some other variable, what the hell's going on here, man? Like. Why? <laughs> you see, the nice thing is that if I were to now take this function f of a and plug myself f of 7, so I'd like to plug myself a equal to 7 there, what I'd get is precisely the integral I'd like to evaluate in the first place. So if I'm able to somehow go on and evaluate this guy out and then, well, take the integral with respect to a of that thing, well then hopefully, really hopefully, I will be able to, well, determine what the function a is and plug a 7 there, and then I just get the value of my integral without, well, computing this awful looking guy in the first place. So let's go on and do it. Well, what is... Uh, the integral between 0 and 1 of x to the power of a dx is going to look like, well, that's just going to be x to the power of a plus 1 divided by a plus 1 in the bounds of 0 and 1, so just plug it in for x, and you will get that the f prime of a is going to be equal to 1 all over a plus a 1. Well, that's surely also because we get that f prime of a is equal to 1 over a plus 1. Well, let's just integrate both sides. I mean, take the antiderivative of both sides, and what you'll get is that our f of a, the f of a itself is just going to be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of a plus 1 by some u sub by its... This one is not that hard. I mean, it's not as hard as the one in the original question, yeah? But now is the problem. We have to add the constant plus c, because well, we are getting a class of functions, not a single function when, we ta when we're taking the, un no, the indefinite integral. That's how it's called in English, yeah? So how do we figure out what the value of the constant c is? Because we'll, it will probably scrap our solution pretty badly. So how do we do it? How do we get the value for c. Well, first of all, you have to see, okay, got you there, <laughs> you have to see that f of a is at the same time equal to this function right over there and this function right over here. So those two functions actually equal to each other. So, well, we can 
without the problem say that the natural log of the absolute value of a plus 1 plus our c is equal to the integral between 0 and 1 of x to the power of a minus a1 all over the natural log of x with respect to x. And so, well, if this is true for any a, I could, for example, plug in a equal to 0, because why not? And if I, pl if I plug in a equal to 0, what I get is just the natural log of 1 plus a c on the left-hand side. I want to say the right-hand side, but... It's your right hand side, probably, so... No. No, it's not. <laughs> Shit. It's gonna be equal to the integral between 0 and 1 of just... Well, x to the 0 is just 1, so 1 minus 1 is just 0, and it's all gonna be a 0. So this other thing is just gonna be a 0, and we get that, well, natural log of 1 is also gonna, is also gonna be a 0, so 0 plus our c is equal to a 0, and so c is equal to 0 itself, and so we get pretty neatly, that because of that fact, we've got f of a being equal to just the natural log of the absolute value of a plus 1. It's not the perfect absolute value, it's not the perfectly straight, it's not a perfectly straight line. Lovely. So now what we want is, well, f of 7, let's just plug a equal to 7 into our natural log. And so what we'll get is f of 7 being equal to the natural log of 7 plus 1, which is just 8. I mean, absolute value, but we can just drop it. We get the natural log of 8. And so we get at our original question, the answer to our original question, what is the integral between 0 and 1 of x to the 7 minus 1 over natural log of x dx is the natural log of 8. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye.